Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite midget fidget spinner, Captain Levi. Um, now, I did not anticipate that I was ever going to make a Captain Levi video, nor did I even think that I would even have to talk about Captain Levi for any significant amount of time, maybe mentioning his name here or there. In fact, this is probably the first time I've even mentioned Captain Levi. I didn't even think I mentioned him in my Zeke video. But today I was driven into the point of madness where for some strange reason I now have to sit down and shoot a video, hopefully this is a short one, uh, about um, Captain Levi. You may be asking Beluga, how did you get driven into madness? What made you make a video about Captain Levi? Well, I was watching some pretty disgusting and awful channels. Um, they do not have the expertise nor the, nor the wisdom to understand it or appreciate Attack and Titan, yet they think they can open their mouths about it anyway. Me is an example. I don't like musicals. And I, um, I'm a, I mean, uh, I'm not gonna say that, but, uh, I don't like musicals. Um, so when I watched Hamilton, and I thought it was awful, I am not a fool. So I said, you know what? Not for me. And to this point, and you'll never hear me talk about it again, I've never talked about Hamilton, and you'll never hear me talk about it again. I just bring up Hamilton to simply to bring up that it's a um, a very good play. I'm told. I'm not going to dispute that because people are saying it's a good play. It's a good, it's a good play. And um, I, but I didn't like it. Uh, and I didn't like it because I didn't. I don't like musicals. And um, I don't like those kinds of, those types of plays in general. So I'm not going to open my mouth about Hamilton. I'm not going to make my critique of Hamilton at all. I just stopped watching it, and I'm not going to watch it ever again in my life, and I'm also not going to comment about Hamilton. I would really appreciate if a lot of these pseudo-intellectuals uh, on YouTube would seriously stop talking about stuff that they do not know or care about. Listen, I, I, I understand, okay? You're not into classic literature, you're not into that kind of stuff, you're into anime and action and, 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 and drama and all that stuff. Perfectly fine. You're a lot of have your own taste, especially Brown's Magic. He's probably like... I don't know, 10 or 15 years old, I don't, I don't know, she sounds, like, she sounds like she's a little kid, but, um, talk about something else. What? I have never once seen if these people shoot a video about, um, Scarlet Letter, hell, even Prince and the Popper, Oliver Twist, um, certainly not Crime and Punishment, um, 1994, I had never seen them shoot a video about any of those things. And if you're asking me why, why I haven't shot any videos about those things, um, it's because, um, I don't care enough to. That's why. I, I, I could if I want. I could 100% could if I want to. I've read, um, I've Prince of the Popper. I've read Prince of the Popper about the same amount of times I've read Attack on Titan. Um, among, among, you know, among other works. But I, I don't care enough. I'm not that passionate about, uh, Prince of the Popper. And I personally do not like Mark Twain. I mean, he's a great writer. I, just, I personally just don't like him. Uh, but, uh, but, these people, I doubt, have even read these books. And if they read these books, they would, um... This is turning to a rant, isn't it? Uh, I guess I have to retile this video when I get done with it. Um, when they do read these books, they are they do it because their teacher forces them to, and they think it sucks, and then they move on. What happened to, to kids being shamed for not appreciating good literature? We used to be like, oh, that kid doesn't understand the story. He'll understand when he gets older. With, with books like, you know, Lord of the Flies and Fahrenheit and stuff like that. Right? You would say that. To them now, it's like, oh wow, these these Twitter kids—they don't know their stuff, and, they, and they're mocking us and they don't understand the story. Again, I would urge you: don't think of Attack on Titan as a, as a manga or as a, even a television show, or even you know, if you want a good television show, there's plenty you can watch. Go watch uh, The Good Place, the NBC show. That's that's fine. Go go watch that. Don't watch. A, go, go, go watch uh, Peaky Blinders. Don't watch. Uh, Attack of Titan, are you serious? Or oh, watch Stranger Things? Um, and the reason why I'm bringing up, you know, I was just when I brought the NBC show, uh, The Good Place, first is because it is, you know, a very well done TV show. And I brought the newer ones because they're newer. If you, if you think I'm getting confused with them, I'm getting confused here. But pretty much, I'm trying to say that if you do not appreciate this type of work, they do not talk about it. Just don't. Okay? But now I'm moving on to my main point. They were saying, um, well, 
Still, she, Brown's Magic shot a video uh, about um, Annie Lanehart and morality and Attack of Titan. And how we already know it's going to be a bad video is the fact that it's nine minutes long. Um, how a video about morality in general, especially morality and Attack of Titan, how it's nine minutes long, I, I don't know. I have no idea how she does that. Um, but she must be a very, very. I, I mean, I did watch the video, but. Uh, she she must be. I'm saying this facetiously. Like, cause I, I did watch the video. Don't take me saying this as if, as if I didn't watch the video because I 100 did. Um, she's a very very must be a very very efficient um, speaker and orator to be able to speak so eloquently about such complex topics and such a complex story within the the very short span of time that it is nine minutes. Uh, unfortunately, that is not true. Uh, but. Uh, they were basically saying, and it's a common argument here over and over and over and over again, which is, oh, they should have punished Annie, or they should have been angry at Annie, why are they fine with Annie, blah, 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 blah. Uh, well, how is this fitting into Levi? She killed Squad Levi, right? So she killed Squad Levi, and people were demanding that she apologize to him, and people are uh, confused as to why Levi's not angry with her. And, uh, another argument is getting levied. They're like, um, okay, but Ben was angry at Zeke, but he didn't kill Annie. Okay, so if, if here, and I've heard this argument, and again, I bring up these two things, not not particularly because these two people are bad. These two are indicative of the um, ending haters. Um, very, very, very large misconceptions. So I want to talk about misconception number one, that um, Zeke <laughs> was killed out of vengeance, right? They said that, that Zeke was killed... Um, Zeke, uh, Levi killed Zeke at, 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 because he killed the scouts out of vengeance. Um, and it, it is astounding to me um, how much you guys didn't understand the story. It's funny because I've never actually heard any hater say this, but they, they it's funny that they didn't say, well, if we didn't understand the story, how can you guys never say this until 149? Um, I never, maybe they have said that, but I've never heard them say that. It's a very good point. How come, you, how come we didn't say that? Um, because we thought we were on the same page, right? Um, but it turns out that you know, they misunderstand a lot of things. So they, these people are so shallow in their thinking and their personality that they misinterpret a whole bunch of stuff. And speaking of that, um, my o the ocean scene, you know, will we be free? That video is coming out. And if you're asking, I already shot that video, but it's Aaron Free. It's a little bit different than that. Again, it's more, it's more levy towards the um, awful fans they see on the hats. Fans are very, very, very awful, and they do not deserve what they've been given at all. Uh, but that's, that's another topic. So, uh, people will have this misconception that somehow um, Levi killed Zeke because he was angry at er because he was angry about him killing Erwin, which is completely untrue. Um, Levi has never been driven by vengeance. Um, uh, we see this since the beginning. He's always been following. What has he always been doing, guys? Come on. He's been following Commander Airman's orders. That's what he's there for. And that is why I do not anticipate me shooting a video about him, because he is generally a very relevant character. Yes, he's consequential. He does a lot of cool stuff we all like, but he's mainly an irrelevant character, especially after the basement reveal. This man, like, I think he literally does nothing. Um, but, looks like he, he contributes in the Battle of Heaven and Earth. But he does not kill him in a vengeance. The reason he kills him, and we know why, because he's been saying it throughout the entire show, but we know specifically why. Um, the first, very first thing he says is at um, when Zeke gets picked up by Peek. When Peek picks up Zeke, what does he say? Does he say, oh man, you killed the entire server core, I need to kill you, blah blah blah. What does he say? He says, I promised. I need to kill you, I promised. You promised Commander Erwin. This entire time, he's been trying to kill Zeke because he promised Commander Aaron that was his dying wish was for him to kill Zeke as the last order he ever gave uh, Captain Levi, and that was to um, kill Zeke. And so, that is why he spent the rest of the story trying to kill Zeke. Um, now, we may be saying, well, Beluga, he was pretty angry in the forest, and he was mentioning, and he was mentioning how he killed all of his comrades, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, yes, he did say that. Uh, and yes, in the cart, he wasn't being the nicest man in the world to Zeke. 
but he is not being driven by vengeance, and vengeance was not his top priority. Um, if vengeance was his top priority, he would have killed him as he, as he stated, he would have killed him in the forest. But he doesn't. Uh, he didn't particularly try to be accommodating towards Zeke, of course, when he complains about the book he's been given. Uh, but um, he's not trying to seek vengeance on him, and he is simply trying to um, fulfill Erwin's last wish. That is why he's going after Zeke. Um, it's not because he kills the server core members. You're being ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but this is a common mistake people make. People are so, so, so shallow and so used to one thing that when they see that, instead of thinking outside the box and thinking, hey, maybe maybe there might be more character motivations behind besides vengeance, they instead decide, hey, it's going to be vengeance. But that's completely untrue. And notice what happens when he actually does end up killing Zeke, if you can even say that he killed Zeke. I mean, he did, but you know what I mean. If you watch, if you watch, if you read the book, you know what I mean. But so he killed Zeke. And does he look, um, first of all, how does he kill him? That's the, that's the other thing. How does he kill him? He's right there. He doesn't, he hit, hit, everything below the waist is immobilized. He can't fight back from what it looks like. Um, he can't transform into the beast from what it looks like. And he is calling over to Captain Levi. Um, he's calling over to Captain Levi, um, signaling to him. So he's obviously not a threat. And now, how does he do this? Now, let's take John Wick, for example. The person who killed John Wick's dog did this. I think we all know what John Wick would do. John Wick would do exactly what he did in the movie. He would shoot him. Just like he shot him in the movie. Right? But what does Levi do? He goes up to him and simply slices off his head. Now, is this... Are these the actions of a person who is um, very upset or driven with vengeance over the beast? Is this a sort of guy who does this? No, he's not. This is a person who's simply trying to accomplish a goal. The killing is a mean to an end. The killing is not part of the fun. The killing is the fun. I mean to say that his goal was not to make him suffer. His goal was simply to kill him because that was Erwin's last wish. And again, I thought everyone was on the same page about this. I, I, had, I could not in my wildest dreams, even though I knew the depths of your guys' lunacy and nonsense i surely must have thought well there's a few things we can agree on armin's a boy and levi wasn't trying to kill Zeke out of vengeance but apparently the latter we did not agree on um so and then he kills him and instead of reveling in his victory like you would expect someone to do or even have that calm stoic face like uh john wick does and simply move on um, he looks confused, which, of course, um, would be the reaction of someone who just saw what just happened. But, in that, by no means in his facial expression, nor his dialogue after, ever indicates that this is something that happens out of, um, vengeance, this is something that he particularly enjoys doing. Everything he does, he does with a purpose. He never lets the emo his emotions get the better of him. We know this. Even in the forest, he didn't really do anything that unhinged. Yes, he used the Thunder Spears to destroy his body, but that was necessary to stop him from escaping, right? Uh, yes, he taunted him, but he taunted him. That's really all he did. I really want you guys to understand this. All he did, really, was taunt him. He cut off his limbs so that he wouldn't um, regenerate, obviously. I mean, was he doing it the most polite way possible? Of course not, but he's not doing it in the meanest way possible, either. He's doing this for a goal. Again, he does not let his emotions get the better of him. Um, and then, of course, when he goes to kill him, he does for you know the cleanest possible way. Again, I'm not saying that just because he does not the cleanest possible way means that means that it's not vengeance. I'm saying the cumulative things plus the actual dialogue itself. He never says he, he wants to kill them. Um, or maybe he does in the forest at one time. I, I don't really remember that chapter, but fairly certain he's never ever ever said that he wants to kill him at a vengeance because he made a promise to Commander Erwin that was his last order and he always was about following Commander Erwin's orders and he had one order and he couldn't follow he's been pricking it we saw it in their dialogue he's like why can I not follow there's just one order I've been able to follow all his orders why not this one 
right? And also, the other wild thing that I need you guys to understand, and we're gonna we're gonna morph into Annie right now. Um, the whole conversation about Annie, and again, I shot a video about Annie. If you're gonna, if you want to go see my full thoughts about her and, and morality and, and and punishing her and all this other justice stuff, you can go and watch that video. And again, if you if, if for some strange contrived reason you disagree with me, and again, I'm not saying that I'm a smart, intelligent person. Um, I'm not. I, it took me a while to figure out the whole spear thing with Ymir. I, I didn't know that for a long time. And there's some other stuff I can't remember. I can't re think of them right now. But there's a couple of things that were very obvious that I did not, did not pick up on. So I'm not, I'm not saying I'm the smartest guy in the, in the room. I'm saying you're disagreeing with Isayama is what I'm saying. Right? So if, if some... If I'm just, just regurgitating Isayama's... Wait, so I'm just reading what Isayama's writing and I'm just telling it to you guys. If some contrived, strange reason you disagree with my video about Annie, you are more than welcome to send me an email. My email's right there. Uh, you can, uh, you can, uh, tag me on Reddit, and, um, you can't, you can't tag people on Reddit, but you can talk to me on Reddit, you know who I am, Bel uh, Beluga underscore the Agorist, and comment my video. <laughs> uh, you can do whatever you need to do to get a hold of me, and I will gladly have a conversation with you, uh, a debate with you, on Friday or Thursday. I have no problem with that, okay? But! I'm not going to go into all the nuances here. And again, if you disagree, I, I would implore you people. It, there's a reason why these videos are so long. It's not going to go off on tangents. That's part of it, but it's really not the main reason. If you disagree with me, before you get all angry, remember, these, these are extremely nuanced conversations that we are having here. And um, if you disagree with a point, go back, watch the entire video, from start to finish, if you, again, if you still disagree after all that time, then we can have a personal one on one conversation, okay? But don't just shut off your brain, don't get all angry because you hear one thing you don't like. There's nuance to this stuff, there's a reason why these videos are an hour long. Okay, now, the reason why he's not um, very mad about Annie um, is the same reason why he wasn't very mad about Zeke. We see him and Zeke were working together. Now, was he angry at Zeke? Of course he was. Zeke took lots, Zeke took lots of people from him. Zeke took Commander Erwin from him, the most important person to him, right? Um, uh, uh, and again, guys, no regrets is not canon. It's not going to be counting anything for no regrets. But you know, we can spin the web as long as we want because again, he he's, he's the war chief and he's responsible and he's a very powerful influential guy. So he's responsible indirectly for a lot of things. So you can connect the dots if you want to, but I'm not going to talk about no regrets because again, it's not canon. But um, yeah, and yes, I know it's referenced in the main thing. I'm just saying it's not canon. Okay, so that way he does. He's very angry, seek, but he's able to have a cordial conversation with him in season four, part one. In the uh, in the very beginning, because they're working together, they're having a plan, right? So, th again, the same reason why he's not all angry with Annie. And here's the other thing: as I said, one of Mila's main things we all like about him is that he does not let his emotions get in the way. Aaron, I mean, well, not not Chad post time skip, Aaron, but um, season one, season two, Aaron. Everything was motion from every every little ink thing he made was made off of just pure unfiltered emotion, right? Same with Mikasa. Uh, Mikasa, <laughs> everything she did was based was done off of just one emotion, right? Um, you know, Armin is a little bit more stoic, but uh, Morgan control of his emotions, but still he has carried on with them a lot. So is you know Connie and John and other people. I bring this to say, Levi is always governed by logic and planning rather than his emotions. Um, now, what would chewing Annie out or berating Annie for? What would that accomplish? No, seriously, sit and think about that. What would that accomplish? Especially if you were, if you actually wanted to punish her by imprisoning her, or God forbid, kill her, you'd be losing a very valuable, as very valuable asset. Um, the other thing is, um, we're all forgetting Reiner. I know, I know you guys like to pick on Reiner because he feels guilty. So you're saying, oh, that's sort of his punishment because he feels guilty. Um, doesn't matter. He still, he still killed a lot of people that were close to Captain Levi. I don't care. Now, yes, Annie did have more of a direct effect, but uh, all three of them were working in content number one, and and and, and Reiner definitely, definitely indirectly killed a bunch of scouts. So please miss me with that, okay? 
Uh, I don't really think he makes much of a distinction between Ryan and Amy. I, I really don't think so. And yet we don't see him break either, either one of them. Again, partially because he's inca incapacitated and partially because it doesn't accomplish anything. What would that accomplish? Serious question. And uh, <laughs> it would accomplish nothing. Right? There's a goal. They want to stop the rumbling. Levi wants to stop the rumbling. So what's he going to do? He's going to put down his petty arguments with her. And again, I mean, they're not petty, but you guys are acting like children. So I just got to say petty. With her, because nothing they're going to do is going to accomplish anything. And if they, and if they actually does something substantial to her, they would they would lose uh, a, a titan. That being um, the uh, female. Which is a very useful, which is a very use, useful Titan. Um, and also, the other thing that people that people never ever ever seem to connect, whenever uh, these situations, whenever we talk about Annie and Levi, is um, Levi's maxim, right? It, it, I forget, this guy forgot that Levi had a maxim. Because I only remember his maxim because when I uh, dump on Aaron, but whenever it comes to an actual thing, then then all of a sudden it just disappears to your mind. Just like people disappear off the internet when I want to debate them. It just somehow get kidnapped by the SBU. I don't know what happened to them. But uh, hey, what is his maxim, right? Uh, something along the lines of you know choose the thing that you regret the least, right? And funny enough, he said this in the context of um, Annie. Annie embodies Captain Levi's maxim, right? Because what does she say? She says that you would do it all over again. That's the epitome of his maxim. So, on the one hand, yes, he, I, I cannot believe I'm saying that this. I can't believe I'm saying that Leaf is a layered character. I never thought I'd be saying that Leaf is a layered character, but here I am. But on the one hand, yes, Levi is um, upset and sad that, that he actually killed these people. But on the other hand, I'm sure. And again, if you ask, I'm sure if you ask Yama, he'll say the same thing. But you guys don't care about Isiana's. Isiana's word means nothing to you, so why, why, why even bother? Um, on the one hand, yes, he's sad and, 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 and angry that, that those people got killed. But, but on the other hand, I'm sure he can respect the fact that she had enough introspective. And she had enough self-awareness to know, back when she was that young, to make the decision that she would regret the least. Okay? Uh, now, whether or not you like her decision... That's fine, but you have to respect that about her, the fact that, that she had that much self-awareness and introspective uh, work that she did to know what she would really get the least in, which would be a decision that would affect her for the rest of her life. Um, so, again, I, I do, I, if, they, if they did have a conversation about that, I believe that that would 100% get brought up. Whether he'd, what, whether, whether he'd say, look, I'm fine with it, or I can forgive it because of that, or whether he can say, I just respect it, but I also still don't like you. I don't know. Because, again, Leva's, Leva's not really a fleshed-up character. I can't say. But I can say that, at the very least, that it's 100% in play. Now, back to the Theo's conversation. So, um, Theo has done nothing to Armin. At all. Right? Um, and uh, we know Theo cares for his children. Right? Uh, Sophia and Und, particularly. Um, so, and Armin has only done hardship to Theo. Now... You guys are so big on the the the, the Marley and recall that he was threatening to um, you know tear her apart one by one, they, torture her basically. Uh, now uh, people may be saying, well, this proves that he was wants vengeance and he wants to punish her. Blah 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 blah. What you're not understanding is that um, he wasn't serious. Number one and uh, number two, the biggest he was trying to get he was trying to get something out of her, which is what which which, which didn't work because he didn't scream and then the whole thing happened. So his plan worked. And number two, number two, they weren't working together. Okay, that, I, 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 again, you people, I cannot for the life of me figure out why you are so um, shallow and how deeply you guys do not understand the story. I was surprised. I was very surprised when I realized, when I, when I realized how popular Tiger Titan was. I was like, man, I'm surprised. I mean, this is a very complex show. I mean, not a lot of people have the intelligence and wisdom to get this show. Um, or the experience for that fact. But it's very popular. Like, hmm, I wonder why. Like, well, you know, the show didn't have Titans. Maybe it wouldn't be so popular. But, I don't know. Uh, but, so I expected 
there to be some pushback towards the end and all this stuff, but this is just out of control. I thought we all had a mutual agreement that the whole campfire scene was supposed to get them past their differences and lay everything out in the open. It was a brilliant scene because, I mean, yes, there was a giant elephant in the room. They were all ignoring it, and then, of course, they were ignoring it because they had to stop Aaron, which was foreshadowed all the way back in the Trost arc. So, yeah. Anyway, so this was foreshadowed back in the Trost arc. That exact conversation. Um, but, <laughs> besides that, uh... I was thinking, well, this is, a, this is a brilliant scene, because these people, they lifted up in the room, they're all coming together to stop Aaron, because they all have a mutual interest in not having the planet destroyed. Uh, so, some for humanity, some for, uh, personal family members, um, and, you know, some for other reasons. Uh, like, you know, like But, I was surprised that I went into this scene, because, obviously, if there's an elephant in the room, but, and the fact they're not listening, but they're not, um, Addressing it, they're trying to stick to different errand, but it's actually a good time that the entire game is back, the game is back, and that Rhino is back, and that Theo is there, uh, Theo Magnus. Uh, they're all able to have the conversations, it's perfect, they're, they're right, it's, it's great because you know, the mechanics against casualties, because you know, when the battle from the casualties, you can't wait to have this conversation, but they have everyone together. I'm like, okay, this is great. It's the part that is a scene we've all been waiting for, they're all gonna reconcile their stuff. And so they did. They all talked about their past and, you know, what they did and why they did it and apologies got exchanged and stuff like that. And, you know, and Johnny even said it. Yeah, the, the idea is to get us out so we can just talk about this all now so we are able to fight Aaron later on. Which, again, was foreshadowed back in the Trost arc. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what it is because if you, for some reason, if you, uh, unless it's your first time on the channel, um, you should have, if you're going to make a, a silly-ass cri criticism, like you just made, surely, surely you must have watched my other videos, and surely you must know what what scene I'm talking about. But if you didn't, hey, that's your own punishment for not watching my videos. Or not even not not, not even that, that I want you to watch my videos is that I want you to st to stop talking when you don't know what you're talking about, or at least see other people's perspective. Notice how I start out this video by saying I just watched two two people who I find extremely repulsive, two ending haters. I constantly am in this, I'm brooding ending haters. So I want to know every one of the arguments. I want to pick pick apart their brain and know what they're talking. I want to know my enemy. You people, the ending haters, you do not even consider people's opinion for a second. I watched in, I watched hours of anime balls deep content. How many hours of Sash have you watched? Or anyone like Sash, right? Uh, you probably watched about four minutes, right? I am, <laughs> you know, this is going too much of a rant, but man, you guys need to chill the fuck out. Uh, but <laughs> which was yeah. So this conversation was pretty back. Back on the trust arc, and um, they're talking about it. And so now that they've talked about stuff, and they all realize, hey, we're all bad people here. And then this gets re, you know, evaluated back in centers after you know Kongi and John get their hands dirty, which they already did. And now, now I come to my final part, the final, the final piece of of of, um, of uh, stuff. Is how come Theo Magath wasn't begging for Armin's head? Which may seem like a very strange question, which is a question that no one's ever posed before, but people keep are constantly whining about what Annie did. And, oh, she's so evil, she didn't change anything. You guys are so big on the, 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 the Marley and soldiers and how evil they are. So, um, Theo has done nothing to Armin at all, right? Um, and uh, we know that Theo cares for his children, right? Uh, so, Theo and Und, particularly. Uh, and Armin has only done hardship to Theo. Now, but I never hear you people once talk about the fact that Armin uh, it, it slaughtered uh, uh, p innocent people in it. Not only did he slaughter innocent people himself, he assisted, he assisted Aaron Yeager in slaughtering their hometown, which is full to the brim with innocent people, including children, uh, and I'm just gonna bring up Sophia and, and uh, was that, was that his name? Und? I don't know. Yeah, so Sophia and Und, because those are the people that we know. We know that Theo Magath cared about those people. So, why isn't Theo Magath so hard on punishing Armin? I wonder why he's not so angry at Armin. I wonder I wonder what about Theo Magath and what he understands about himself and human nature. I wonder why he's not so angry at Armin. It's probably due to the fact that Theo Magath understands he's a filthy sinner 
which is probably the same realization that Armin has and everyone in that room has. They all feel icky and yucky, especially Connie, because Connie just got done. <laughs> it's insane. He just got done, uh, uh, almost costing Falco, one of the in most innocent, beautiful people in the entire show, and I say beautiful, I'm talking about his soul. In the entire show, I hate that I have to say that, but uh, in the entire show, to revive his mother, even though he knew it was not the best thing for her. So all of them feel icky and gross, right? Um, and they're about to feel more icky and gross as to what, they, what they're gonna get, what they're gonna go do at the port. Which, of course, um, Amy tries to stop them from doing any particularly because she says, "Well, you know what? I know it's like to get blow my hands." You know, she well, she wasn't there at Liberia. She's like, "I know it was like to get blow my hands. You guys don't need to do that. We, we, our hands are right dirty. We might as well do it." But they end up doing it anyway, and all of them feel disgusting. And this is why I've said over and over again that the uh, one of the last chapters is called Sinners because they all had the realization, "Hey, hey, we're all very, very disgusting people here. We've all done atrocities that are unforgivable." Yes, I said that. Armin is an unforgivable piece of shit. He is. But that's the point of the story. <laughs> that's what you know, our guys are understanding. The point of the story isn't, hey, Armin's a great guy. Reiner's a good guy because he made up for his sins. And he's a prick. And Theo Magath is a prick. Okay? That's not the point of the story. Okay? I, I, I thought it was brilliant meme. It was like, Isayama trying to, you know, quite complex characters and the fan base is, is debating about which teenage war hero is her favorite. Which... Quick, quick side note: I, None of the Eldians are war, are war criminals because they never signed any international agreements for obvious reasons. And I highly doubt that Marley would have signed international agreements because they're an empire. So who would force them to sign international agreements? And what legitimacy would they have? Whatever. But again, that's a that's a small technicality. I'm sure you guys are gonna get the picture. These people are all very evil people, and all of them had the blood of innocence on their hands, and, uh, and most of them had the and most of them. In fact, all of them had the blood of um, their friends on their hands as well. And none of them feel clean. And even Mikasa says, and yes, I know it says Mikasa, but it still embodies the spirit of what happened at Liberio. And overall, Mikasa says, I want to share in your sins. Taki, this is in, this is in like 133. It is very late into the rumbling. And so on and so forth. So, that is why um, Levi killed Zeke and was fine with Annie, and that, that, that is why um, there was no real, real big backlash for what she did and all this sort of stuff. And you also recall that um, Reiner, uh, what's his face, uh, Reiner was about to get forgiven too, right? Or he didn't forgive, see that's the thing about Sean, John didn't really forgive Reiner, and of course who would blame him, but he was willing to move past that and just continue to follow him anyway. But Reiner pushed him purposely. I must, I must add, purposely pushed him so that he would beat him up, so that so that it would assuage his guilt. Basically, that, that was the entire point. Um, and but and and then um, you know, he's perfectly fine not being forgiven. He actually wants to not be forgiven because being forgiven would make him feel it would make him feel unworthy of forgiveness if he was forgiven. Um, and he is more healthy. And um, that's why she asks, you know, if she's forgiven. She doesn't give an answer, <laughs> which is pretty sad. But uh, she's, you know, ah, she asks because she does care about that kind of stuff. Again, these are two completely different people. Again, yes, they've done the same sins, but they're still much different people, and they're very well written. Um, both of them are well written. Both of them. Uh, yeah, and apparently so is Levi. I, I never knew Levi was a well written character until you people came up with this nonsense. nonsense. Um, so what is the moral of the story? Um, not a second Titan, that take forever. But the moral of this video is if you don't know what you're talking about, simply keep your mouth shut. Um, and, uh, and also, I really, if you, even if you do, you know, want to open your mouth, which, I mean, why well, you have to listen to me? I'm just a random guy. I have a very small YouTube channel. Why should you listen to me? Fine. If you are going to open your mouth, um, listen to the other side's point in their entirety before you make your argument. I just have to say that. You have no idea how many comments I've had to address about stuff, about nonsense that they've been spewing before they've I said, I've already shot a video about that. Go watch that video then, then come back to me. Watch the entire thing, then come back to me. And again, if they were to say, hey, your videos are 30 minutes long, and I don't have that much time on my hands, I'm like, okay, fine. Then don't ever talk to me again. Because why would I talk to you and I don't even know my points? That's completely fine. Just don't talk to me. But, but here we are. We have people who are talking. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what my stance is. Uh, 
and they decide to get into, into arguments and just stuff that they do not know about. Um, so again, I, uh, ending defenders, ending haters, making shippers, story shippers, whatever. Just listen to the other side and they're going in their entirety, especially when dealing with complex subjects like Attack of Titan. And again, if you don't want to listen to their points because they're very long, perfectly understandable. I totally understand. This, this stuff is complicated. It takes a lot of time. Just don't ever speak to us because there's no reason to because you have to listen to us. Anyway, that being said, uh, hope everyone uh, enjoyed their day today. Have a good day tomorrow. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, as I just said, have a good day.